ریڈیو زندگی 1170 سیونٹی اے ایم پہ ویلکم لسنرز میں ہوں آپ کے ساتھ ہیرا شو لے کے آئے ہیں دا شاہ پیرالی لا شو براڈ ٹو یو بائی شاہ پیرالی لا گروپ اینڈ وی آر ونس اگین جوائن بائی اٹارنی شاہ پیرالی آن ایئر ود اس فرام ناؤ ٹل الیون اے ایم اٹارنی شاہ پیرالی از دا فاؤنڈر پریزیڈنٹ اینڈ مینیجنگ اٹارنی آف دا شاہ پیرالی لا گروپ وچ از بیسڈ رائٹ ہیئر ان نیو ورک ہیڈ کوارٹر ان ہیئر ان نیو ورک ہی از اے ممبر آف دا امیریکن امیگریشن لائرس ایسوسی ایشن ایز ویل ایز دا اسٹیٹ بار آف کیلیفورنیا He is a passionate advocate of human rights, civil rights, social action and social services and he has a strong interest in and knowledge of the political slash legal system in the US. He formed his law group to work on the causes that he feels most ardently about. His law group focuses on immigration laws with an emphasis on employment-based immigration and he helps his clients all over the US. Listeners' offices are in Newark, San Francisco and Washington, D.C. So, West Coast or East Coast, you can definitely uh, speak to them. They can definitely help you with your immigration cases. Whether it's employment-based immigration or family-based immigration, if you want to ask any questions about Attorney Shah Pirali, then you can call them on 510-657-1170. Again, that's 510-657-1170. Again, you can call them on 510-657-1170. کر سکتے ہیں ابھی ڈیورنگ دا شو لیکن اگر آپ اٹارنی شاہ پیرالی کی سے ان کی ٹیم سے شو کے بعد جڑنا چاہتے ہیں دین یو کین میک این اپائنٹمنٹ بائی بائی کالنگ دیر آفس نمبر ایون رائٹ ناؤ فائیو ون زیرو سیون فور ٹو فائیو ایٹ ایٹ سیون یو ول گیٹ آل دس انفارمیشن اینڈ مور آن دا ویب سائٹ پیرالی لا ڈاٹ کام دیٹس پی ای ای آر اے ایل ایل وائی ایل اے ڈبلو ڈاٹ کام اٹارنی شاہ ویلکم ٹو دا شو گڈ مارننگ Good morning, Ara. Good morning to all the listeners. Happy Wednesday. So today we're going to talk, of course, about immigration. Thank you for the nice introduction. And hopefully today we'll be joined by Attorney Masood Jumrati, who is a, who is, um, a lawyer in, um, in Vancouver in Canada, mm-hmm. uh, practicing uh, mostly immigration law. And we'll talk a little bit about Canadian immigration because that's, uh, that's what we, we, a lot of people are asking questions, hopefully, We will be able to cover some of the topics that he mentioned. And also, if you need uh, any help, feel free to reach our office, 510-742-5887. And before I start, anything I'm going to tell you today is going to be, a, uh, everything we are going to tell you today is our opinion. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. Bear in mind, this is not legal advice. It's mostly informational. So today we're going to start a little bit about about, of course, what's happening out there. Um, the big news, of course, we have those uh, now those uh, embassies closed and flights coming from India now are, are no longer available. Um, I don't know. I think there are a few exceptions. So for people who are stuck there, unfortunately, there are no way really to come back. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there are no way really to come back because um, unless you, you are a U.S. citizen, or they are, if you are form part of some kind of national interest uh, uh, frontliner, then you might be able to come back. So if you are there, just hang in there and stay, stay put because um, I have a lot of people calling saying, oh, I want to come back. You can find a way. Unfortunately, I can't because that will be going around a sanitary kind of situation. And I'm really sad. Um, many people have advocated for a few weeks now not to travel because things might get bad, but Still people, you know, they, they want to travel, visit family or for stamping. But right now you'll have to stay there and wait on what's happening next. So that's basically the main thing that is rolling right now in India. And um, people just, uh, we don't know, by the way, I don't know how this will, how long this will last. You probably will know better than me back there in India, etc. what's going on. Because uh, a lot of people also calling, tell me how long this will last. Well, right now I think they put it for two weeks, but I think it's going to be a lot longer, maybe a couple of months, maybe more. So you have to hang in there and wait. And plus, with the backlog, by the time people go for the for the stamping, it will take longer time. So I think pretty much this is happening all over the world right now for India. And some countries like Australia is completely banning even... Uh, Australian citizen coming from India, they, are, they cannot come back. So it is, it is really um, a tough time. So you'll have to, unfortunately, bear with, with, uh, with us because 
the the airlines themselves for well, even they are open some of them will not allow you in so even with a visa etc you might not be able to come back so hang in there uh, let's hope things get better and then we can we can get out of uh, of there so um any questions on that, because I, I can't heard you. I, th- I don't know if you had any questions. Look, I didn't have any questions, but then uh, about the travel ban, uh, there's been also, uh, you know, I think uh, one of the travel restrictions was that B1, B2 would be suspended. The travel would be suspended till the end of this year. So whoever had plans would probably not be able to come. But, of course, when it comes to immigration, you would know better. Yes, I uh, actually I heard that too, but I didn't have confirmation. But probably, yes. Because there is a, a proclamation right now from um, from Biden, uh, I think it was issued uh, April 20th, which says basically that the CDC um, will be um, uh, will be kind of blocking pretty much all the entrance. Hmm. I don't know about the part. You of know how you said about us. How you said about Australia, even the citizens cannot travel to that country. I think that no, would, you know, it is it it may sound harsh, but I think that is the right thing to do. It's not just just that people on B one B two would carry the virus or carry the uh, disease. Exactly. You know, anybody, citizen, non citizen, whoever, and if they come in here by any any special requirement, they should definitely quarantine and not take this lightly. So it's also their responsibility. Exactly, because this is the thing. A lot of people are taking it as a racist thing. It's not. It's a sanitary problem. And, and uh, the, the, rule, the rule that we have in, uh, when it comes to, to doing what we call a quarantine, whenever there's a, there's a situation like that, a plague or any kind of uh, virus, uh, is to stay where you are. Don't get in, don't get out. That's the general rule. It's been there for ages. In centuries, it's, it's been there since since uh, the dome of time when they had the plague, etc. That mm. is the rule. You don't get out. But now the problem is that, of course, a lot of people are scared, and those who have the means are trying to get private jets or trying to, to cross the, the borders. And I just heard right now on the Everest, a lot of people crossed, and, and many of the people also got infected there. So... This is uh, going to be very hard because already the government is overwhelmed. I don't think they will be able to block people. But at the same time, on the U.S. side and Australia, I understand the, the, the situation, right? So if they let one person in, it, it, will inf- it will infect 10 people minimum. And the 10 people will uh, infect each one 10 of them. So it goes as a, as a ge- geometric progression, and that's going to be really hard to contain. So the best practice is that I know a lot of people are trying to sue and tell the government they have to let them come back, but they, I don't know if they will budge on that because most Australians are supporting that, and even people who are not Australians who are in Australia, they, they don't want to, to be carrying this virus. And that's why you see the proclamation from, from uh, Biden, uh, which came on April 30th. So, just, uh, just let's just see how is is Masood there? Yes, he is here. I am here. I'm here. I can hear you. Okay, okay. Assalamualaikum. Welcome, welcome, Masood. Uh, we were talking Thank you. a little bit about the, the about the blog that we have in India right now. I think Canada also has the same. So oh. maybe we'll start with that. Tell me what's going okay. on on your side there. On my side, there's lots of exciting things happening. Uh, tomorrow, May six, um, the government seems to be. Very, the Canadian government is focusing on getting uh, most people in Canada their status. Uh, and uh, so they've been announcing um, lots of programs to regularize and give permanent residency to a lot of people. And tomorrow is uh, another 90,000 who will be eligible to apply for wow. permanent residency. It's um, mm-hmm. essential workers, healthcare workers. Uh, and then a long list of many, many people who are here, from from gas station cashiers, shop cashiers, to you name it, agricultural workers, laborers, and then uh, international students are also going to get a chance to apply. 90,000 tomorrow, a big day. Wow. So, wow. The, that, but is it, that, is it only for people inside, Masood? Only yes, for people yes. inside? Or? Like I said, the government is trying to get everyone in, in who is legally in Canada, not everyone, but maximum number of people to to become permanent residency residents. So the the wow, message is good. well, if you are if you are working in Canada on, uh, legally, and if you are studying in Canada legally, 
then your chance to become a permanent resident is even higher. So come to Canada to study, come to Canada to work, and then uh, you'll be eligible for permanent residency. I'm coming. That's okay. <laughs> so let's, let's talk a little bit about, about how people are going to, to deal with that. How can you help? So if someone well, is there, let's say, on this a one, I, I can't help tell us. anyone who is outside. So for your audience, uh, for your audience, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not, it's not uh, relevant. But I mention it just to push uh, people to consider Canada if they want to study or work in future. Yeah, but the thing is that we also have some listeners in Canada. So tell us a little bit, few, few, at least five minutes on that. We have plenty of time. Tell us a little bit how this is working. So if oh, you, uh, because we, I, I know we have listeners all over the world right now, and we also yeah. have in Canada because they listen online. So yes. just go ahead and tell us a little bit. Well, all they have to do, all they have to have to be ready before tomorrow is the English language test. And like I've said it many, many times, um, after your birth, after one's birth certificate, the second most important document, if you're considering Canada for anything, to study, to work, or to stay, permanently is to get your language test done and uh, if if it's english then it's uh, the test that has to be done is uh, IELTS the general module mm -hmm. and uh, there's another test that's canadian IELTS is administered by the british council they're present in most countries in the world and uh, the other mm -hmm. english test is CELPIP C E L P I P the website is selpip.ca uh, that's the Canadian test. Take those tests. They're available outside Canada as well now, just like the uh, IELTS. And uh, make sure you have your police clearance ready, but uh, language test, and then uh, uh, apply. The, the details will be announced today at two uh, in two hours by the Minister of Immigration himself uh, because the announcements were made, but the details of how the de very detail uh, will, will come out today, and tomorrow is D-Day. Uh, so it will be an online application, and uh, it's, it's, it's a lottery of 90,000, first come, first serve, so people are scrambling. Yeah, and our office, wow. uh, the phone is ringing, people are busy and last minute, so it's, it's quite... Uh, a lot of excitement around Start, here. Starting a, right, definitely, definitely. Well, good luck to all of you guys who are there. Yeah. And this is a chance, like Masood is saying, to yeah. get something which is a lot of people have been have been looking for, and now suddenly yeah. this great chance opening. So it's like almost an amnesty, but not really yeah. like that. But yeah. but, but generally clean, speaking, so. Shah, um, I, I mm -hmm. think that's what you originally asked me. But in my excitement, I talked about this uh, express this this new pathway for people in Canada. But generally, everything else mm -hmm. is open. People can still apply despite the pandemic. They can apply. Maybe wait a little longer. If it used to be six months, maybe wait nine months or one year. Uh, the processing times are very uncertain at the moment. Uh, it depends not only on the Canadian government here, but it depends on the employees at the embassies and high commissions in uh, various countries. Take India, for instance, at the moment. Uh, it's... Processing has completely slowed down because of what is sadly the, the, uh, what, what's happening in, in, in India. So uh, at the moment, we're not, we're not pestering even the embassy to process anything because at the moment, it's, it's, uh, right now, it's time to, to be compassionate and hope for, for better times for India and Indians. Definitely, yeah, our heart goes to all the people suffering because it's very hard. And Absolutely. that's what we were talking about earlier. A lot of, of, um, of countries have shut down, and, and we have the declaration of Biden and India. Yeah. And this is the normal process. Some people are yeah. taking it back. I have people calling, say, hey, get me in. But I, I can't. This is a sanitary problem, yeah. not an immigration yeah. problem, yeah. right? Yeah. So I mean, I mean, same for, if, for, again, for Canada? Go, go, yeah. Going back to, to what you're saying, uh, to add to what you're saying, we get uh, a lot of calls about peop uh, from people who are uh, currently in India or even neighboring Pakistan, Bangladesh, who are obviously and legitimately worried about what will happen. Uh, because this, if if this is not, uh, if this doesn't end soon in India, it, it risks, uh, the, you know, the contagion 
will be will be devastating. So so people, a lot of people who are educated, who who maybe have money or some money, they are looking for a way to get out, and immigration is one way. But there's no express way to get anyone out, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, that's why um, I'm not rubbing it in, but uh, uh, if you're eligible, apply now. Don't wait for next year or next year or next time, exactly, because exactly. that time may never come, you know. Mm-hmm. That's what we've been saying last year, too. You know, the people were, were saying, okay, I'm not decided. Well, take it. And then later, if you don't need it, that's up to you. You can yes, give it up. Yes, but yes, take it when you yes. get a chance because yeah, the poochie might not right? knock again. Yes, yes. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. and that's where a lot of people – I have a client who I, I, I spoke to a few years ago. I think you handled his case. And, and uh, it was a fluke. I told him, just go ahead and do that. And he got it. And now he just called me last time. He said he's very happy in, in Canada and – just yeah. wanted to thank us for recommending. So those Absolutely. kind of things are work out, right? So people yeah. should consider it because even though we do U.S. immigration, a lot of people are very attracted to U.S., but the truth is that Canada have a lot more stuff to offer, like if yes. free health care, which is an amazing <laughs> part of it. Yeah. So I mean, health care wise you know, we, we, we stood tall. During the recession 2008, we stood tall because we have, Five major banks, and and uh, it was complete. We talked about that uh, many years ago, you and I. But uh, yeah, yeah, Canada is still open uh, despite the pandemic. People are still coming in, flights permitting, of course. Mm-hmm. If there are no flights, then you can't come in. Uh, direct flights from India are currently banned, but you can fly to a third country. And uh, but you have to have tests done before leaving India. You have to have tests done from that third country where you stop over. So it's quite cumbersome, but not impossible. Yeah, and then during oh, COVID, Canada has a has that. a reunific- reunification program for people who are who have parents overseas, who have close siblings, who have close relatives, uh, spouses, uh, even people who have been engaged on a uh, you know, and they can demonstrate that it's genuine. They can still apply for a special exemption to fly. So the the government is still doing its best. Uh, under the circumstances, and uh, we we carry on, we carry on, and then there are, exactly. there are people still being refused for whatever reason. So as lawyers, we we still have, you know, our appeals to do and everything else. Yeah. Tell me, the Mr. I have one the question. The provinces in Canada are still attracting investment. Yeah. So there are, there are lots exactly. of opportunities. Yeah. Let Especially me ask you one question, has, uh, Mr. Sorry, go on. Before you continue, let me. Let, sorry, I interrupted you. No, I have no, one no, question. Sorry. I have a someone who just called me. I think a couple of days ago, and I don't know if I, he he called you, but he um he was asking the question. He got everything, and then he got his stamp, but then the border shut down. And you know how the yes. stamping for for the PR is 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 limited to a certain amount of time. Now he already oh, that is expired, and he cannot get in. He couldn't get a flight. Is there any yeah. way to revive that, or they have to start over? You mean this is stamping for the U.S.? No, 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 no. Stamping for oh, from, okay. for, uh, for, for, for Canada to get the, the to landing, Canada to get the land, the PR. Yes, it's called the landing process. Yes, the landing. And uh, and yes. uh, basically that will be automatically extended because it wasn't their fault that the borders closed. Not their fault that yes. there is a pandemic. Uh, so. There, there's no mm-hmm. doubt that that can be reversed. If they need help, we'll oh, be happy beautiful. to help. But uh, I don't think, uh, oh, okay. uh, yeah. Oh, that's good. I that's good. Think, because in the U.S., it's, we, it's, it's very not very enough. clear for us. It's not very clear for us because I've I've been hoping that this will be the case, but we have not really got anything. Uh, no, for us, um, for us here, it's clear. Concrete. For us in Canada, it's clear. Perfect. If anyone's document expired, anything expired, medical or criminal check and all that, and if they can't procure it uh, in a timely fashion, then uh, uh, they get automatic extension. Yeah. And you can imagine okay, so if, now, it's now refused, if 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 uh, visas are refused because of the pandemic, that's oh you couldn't get uh, your process completed because of the pandemic. Then you you know all the lawyers will be running to federal court, and the government wants to avoid that. It doesn't make sense. It's against it's against true, uh, fairness and natural justice, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. What we have as um, uh, equality, uh, yeah. uh, 14th and 5th Amendment. 
So what I was um, another thing that we are getting also I get a lot of questions is investment in Canada because right now the the stable there are very few stable countries by the way in the world right now yes. and one of them is definitely Canada. So yes. let's say if someone is from India, Pakistan, Nepal, or Egypt, or you name it, right? Because we have yeah. people all over the world. Let's yeah. say you want to. Someone has hundred thousand dollars, right? I'm talking about yeah. Canadian dollars. Or yeah. let's say they want to invest. What do they get in that? Because that's a major question. Because that's usually that hundred thousand is like a round-up figure. They all talk about it. Uh, like yeah. we have an E2 visa for US. Do yes. we have something like that in Canada? Yeah, we do. We do. It's called the Regional Investment Program. You have to invest hundred thousand mm-hmm. uh, in a small community. A small community is, uh, you know, a big community, but it's not a big uh, metropolitan center, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's called business investment. You have to create one job. You have to live within hundred kilometers of that uh, business, and. Uh, uh, it, there's a long list of anything. Sometimes grocery stores are acceptable. Sometimes uh, small restaurants are acceptable. So um, you get to come to Canada on a special permit to operate your business. That happens within a year. And then once you run the business, you can get your permanent residency in about two years. But you get all the benefits and, still you and need privileges. The English language, right? English language Sorry? you need for everything, right? Even you need the the ILTS, uh, ELTS or something like that. You need yes, something yes. for the but, English. But the, the, for every case. It's, not, it's not supposed to be very high like the express entry. IELTS language language score for investment is uh, is uh, level four, if people understand. Uh, the highest is eight. Four is um, average or below average. Uh, and most people uh, can easily score four for English. All French. Okay, okay. Yeah. But it has to be in a region, right? A specific region, a bit like EB5 in the U.S. It has to be regional, so no, uh, in a area, yeah, or in, anywhere. In, yeah, in a, in a, it's a little like the, your EB5 regional, but it doesn't work like the EB5. It's not one project where where they're pooling money. That's how EB5 works. There's one project and mm-hmm. they pool funds, right, from investors. Yes. This one, no. You're individual. You identify the business. We, of course, we have a team that helps people identify the business. You you do a business proposal to the government, How what business it is, how you're going to run it, how you're going to create one job. Um, that's it. It's, it's, not, the government is not, look, is not after the investment of the immigrants. They're after the number of people that comes in that family because one investor easily brings minimum three to four people with him or her, mm-hmm. right? So that's, yes. that's where, that's where they want population. They want to increase the population yeah. uh, in, in, re, that's in rural That's kind of r- rare in the world now, right? <laughs> Everybody yeah. wants to get rid of their population, kind of, and Canada needs more people. <laughs> and for so yeah, the only exactly. country in the world, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Canada has yeah. lots of room for everyone. Yeah, but you have to be. Yeah, eligible. in fact, Canada is bigger than the U.S. with one tenth of the yeah. population, right? If am I am I yeah. wrong on that? I think yes, it's bigger, yes. four times bigger and, than the U.S., right? Yeah. And we we have yeah. the richest resources in in the world, water. Yeah, and the nicest yeah. one of the nicest place to be too. Except everybody yeah. complains about the cold, but I prefer the cold and the the heat. <laughs> so I don't have yeah. a problem it's, with that. But I've, um, I've, I've said this to you and your audience before. Canada is not. Uh, all winter and igloos around the year. We have beautiful summer. Like now it's spring and it's beautiful sunshine. We're on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Our cli- climate is different. So anyway, I don't have to give a geography lesson. Uh, people can Google and find out whether right. in Canada. <laughs> and no, Canada. they like to hear it from you, right? No, no, yeah, I'm yeah, that, but so. I say the same thing every time. <laughs> it's like I'm okay. trying to reassure so, people, come, please, come. You know, you're not going to die yeah. here. It's not freezing cold. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 you hear no, that, Ira? No. So I think we should go there. Yes, uh, we thought last yeah, time no. that we should go there, and uh, you know, definitely, he's you know, come, come, come. We're not going to die over there, so we should definitely go. No, because... you will not. You will not die. You will not die. I'll, I'll take you uh, to the hospital, you know, and the healthcare is free. <laughs> that's reason uh, enough, yes. I think. You know, that's yes. that's that's good enough reason. Yes, yes, yes. exactly, exactly. Absolutely. And now, yeah. uh, Masood, like now, let's talk a little bit about the express entry because we keep hearing it, and a lot of people question that. 
what's the gist really of that system? It's it's just like suddenly they need a certain people in certain area. No. They just put it no. there, and if no. you how does no, it work? It, it's only a point system. It's not certain areas. Uh, that's that's uh, those are different programs. Uh, there's a global talent stream for that. But uh, for express entry, anyone who meets the minimum score can apply. And then when you apply, every month there's a draw, and the score is determined every month. It's not fixed. And then the government can invite 3,000 people, 100 people, 2,000 people, depending on... Because they have an annual target to meet, 400,000 people they have to bring in. So they have to meet those targets. And the express entry is a purely point system. But uh, once you reach that that higher point, like currently it's around 470, 470, then you get an invitation to apply, and then from there on it's expressed. You come to Canada within six months. If you don't have okay, enough points, me. this is this is where people start looking for job offers because a job offer can get you a bonus of 50 points, five zero. So that this is where mm. uh, a lot of uh, overseas applicants they're stuck around 420, 419, 421. So they keep calling us to find them an employer. And uh, we are not, we are lawyers, we're not employment agency. And uh, and that's where there's a lot of fraud happening, a lot of scams. So be careful. Don't give your money yes. to anyone without verifying. Uh, but there are genuine uh, uh, employers who will, will hire you based on your skill. You know, I've helped uh, uh, a major radio station here bring... Uh, with five, six people, very talented people, very in, in high-level radios uh, from uh, uh, one big part of the world. So, so there are truck drivers, trucking companies who need truck drivers. There are agricultural and food companies who need uh, meat processors, uh, poultry uh, workers, you know, cleaning chickens. So all those have high value in Canada at the moment. So let's let's yeah. take an example of that. You're saying you have you have poetry, for example. If someone yeah. wants to 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 be getting the points, what kind of proof they have to have? Because a lot of people can say, "Yeah, I know how to take care of chicken," but hey, do they have to have well, uh, some kind of no, letters? No. For, the, for, for chicken cleaners, no experience required. For meat cutters, you need to have one to three one to three months of experience, some experience, but uh, experience is usually verified by. Uh, uh, job letter, le- employment letter from your uh, current or previous employer, and then if that's doubtful, then they will ask you for proof of uh, salary. But then again, you need meet with a lot. You deal with other people in some countries who get paid cash. There's no, no, mm. no bank deposit for the salary and all that. So there are a lot of external extrinsic evidence that we provide to establish to prove that uh, work experience. And it goes by province, right? Not like in America, where immigration is just federal. We don't no, have a specific. No, immigration by is federal in, in Canada too. Immigration is federal, but there are some regional, provincial programs, and that's uh, we don't okay. have enough time to go over that. That's that's a whole day. No, session. but let's let's talk a little bit about that. We have we have another 25 minutes. I want to because that's yeah. another question that I get, and I can't answer. I usually refer them to you because even if I know, I'm not licensed to answer. But exactly. tell us a little bit about the hot ones. Just um, a synopsis of the not not okay. Let's not detail, I, I'm because in, if you want more detail, they can call us. Of, I'm in the province of British Columbia. Okay, so in BC, mm-hmm. it has it has like 10 different programs. So uh, if, if, if someone hires a hotel worker here, for instance, that hotel worker may, become, may apply for permanent residency after they have nine months experience or one year experience in BC. Whereas the same hotel worker working in Ontario or Alberta may not have that chance. So, so that's where it, it, it's designed to facilitate employers in each province to attract the right people where there are shortages. So, so, and and this is where applicants have to be very careful. My personal favorite is uh, BC, not because I live here, but because of the flexibility of the program and and the variety. Mm-hmm. Like truck drivers love coming to BC because you drive a truck for nine months and you become eligible to apply for a permanent residency. 
but that is first approved by the province. That's where that's why it's called the provincial nominee program (PNP). The province gives you a certificate of uh, selection or nomination, and then that, and then after that, you can apply, uh, which is a paper application, to the federal government, and the federal government will give you your visa, your permanent residency, uh, if you have no criminal convictions or charge and uh, no medical issues that will be a burden on the health services in Canada. And each province has uh, different programs, um, and and most of these programs are employ. You need an employer. There's no way you can apply on a point system in a province except Quebec. Quebec has a different program. It's a same similar mm-hmm. program to the Federal Express Entry, which is a point system, but that's uh, for people who speak French. Yes. So Mauritius yes. for listening. So that that's their chance. Uh, Especially yeah, right yeah. now, a lot of people want and to get out of And if you're bilingual, so. <laughs> English and French, there's another program for that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's one thing that a lot of people who are bilingual, like we yeah. are, both yeah. of us, <laughs> yeah. have but, this. But uh, I want to uh, talk about to startup share. visa. Startup visa is is a is sure. a is a start is a. I think I mentioned it last month on your program on your show. Uh, startup is a program designed to attract people who have ideas or who have a business. Uh, or may not even have the business, but they have some ideas where there are venture capitalists uh, listed by the government of Canada who will study it. If they like your idea, they will fund your project. And through that, you get immigration to Canada uh, in about six months. So it's very good. Wow. It's a bit like the government wanted to, to replicate what happened in the Silicon Valley where all these, let's say it, uh, all these uh, bright Indians uh, got permanent residency and and the ideas uh, made what Silicon Valley is today. So Canada wanted to create its own by attracting people from California who were not uh, getting the 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 green card, and then uh, other professionals around the world, other geniuses and uh, bright guys and girls who have good ideas but they don't have the means. There are many, there are thousands, millions of them around the world, in Africa, in Asia you know, Southeast Asia. So that program is really taking off now. It was a pilot project. It's been going on, but not they, people didn't pay much attention to them. But currently, uh, that's something that's very, very popular. Some of them, uh, you know, you, you only have to show that you can spend $40,000, but you have to have an idea. Sometimes, if you're an accountant, chartered accountant, you you can be eligible for that. Yeah. So that's why I always oh, say, send, send me your details, and uh, we will look at them. Sometimes it takes us longer to get back to you, but bear with us. Uh, but we will mm-hmm. uh, get back to you, and then we'll prescribe very, very, very. what uh, programs you're eligible under. And you pay us only when we tell you that you're eligible. And uh, if you're not eligible, we'll tell you how you may become eligible. And if you cannot, absolutely, then we'll say sorry. That's great. That's great. So, Masood, you were talking about the startup. Last time we had a, a question on that regarding do you have to show that you have some money to, to get in first, then the, the venture capitalists are going to work with you? Or is no, just no, the hey, you have the idea, they like it, that's it? No, no, no. The, the, ven- the startup visa, there are two ways. One is where you present your idea to the venture capitalist uh, pool you choose from there. And there are companies that are specializing in taking your idea and finding the right fit, the right venture capitalist. So there's a new niche that's developed now. Uh, They're doing that. Uh, That's one. So you don't need to invest. They will invest, and but they will want equity in your in your venture, of course. There's another one, another model where uh, uh, you have to show if you show that you have a running business. And you have some money, let's say fifty thousand, hundred thousand, incorporate a company in Canada. Then, if they give you uh, uh, um, these these designated uh, uh, agencies like your idea, then they just sign off. Uh, it costs you anywhere between fifty to hundred thousand dollars, and you will get your permanent residency. It's the fastest way to get permanent res- okay. res- permanent residency in Canada. 
Oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. That's why and we the same say thing send us the resume, we'll tell you. Perfect, perfect. And if people mm -hmm. need uh, to, to be in contact with Masood, they can call my office, 510-742-5887, and we'll introduce you to Masood, or just email us from the website, yeah. and that would be the easier way to for me to introduce you to him. That's so the best way, just yeah. to let people know, we're in conversation with attorney Masood, uh, not attorney, because in Canada it's... Uh, you are, uh, I say lawyer, just to make it easy. You're a lawyer yeah, in Canada. Lawyer and, uh, you, yeah, exactly. And you practice immigration law mostly. And uh, no, you've been doing that before. I did. Yeah. Exclusively. Yeah. Okay, that makes yeah. it more precise. And uh, you've been doing this more, more than, what, 20 years now? How, how many years? Because I've known you uh, for like 12, 15 25, years. 25. 25 years. 25 years. Wow. wow. So... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're probably doing very well, and I know a lot of people know you because oftentimes when we have the radio show and people calling today when they're taking callers, but mm. they will recognize you and then basically say, yeah, I remember you, you got me in Canada, and then I came to the U.S. after that. That's another yeah. thing that a lot of people uh, want to have. They have Canada, and then from Canada they jump in the U.S. after they become yeah. a citizen. So that's yeah. something they, they might want to consider. Yeah, and, many uh, people like do that. that. You don't many have to people. wait outside. Yeah. Yeah, Ex many exactly. people do that. They once they become citizens in Canada, because then it's your free free movement completely. Mm. You will never lose the Canadian mm. citizenship, and you can uh, move to Can to U.S. to uh, to the uh, uh, Kuzma, uh, the old NAFTA. Mm. That's one way, or you know, or you can go in as what E1, E2, is it as an investor? Yes, E2 visa, yes, E2 visa yeah. mostly or E1, but not yeah. not for India, unfortunately. But you know, that's the problem. We have some limitation for U.S. It, it depends per country, and yeah. many countries yeah. are not eligible for E2, unfortunately. Yeah. So, so Canada NAFTA, doesn't have that, right? The old, yeah, the old NAFTA or the new Kuzma is uh, is very good for people who have Canadian passport uh, to move uh, uh, between U.S. and Canada. Oh yeah, especially I have a lot of okay, clients I, I, who are of Indian origin. They came to mm -hmm. Canada as permanent residents from U.S., but their main line of business was still in U.S. because they were in the IT uh, uh, IT sector, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So they definitely. they will be based in Vancouver, paying less taxes, uh, enjoying the nice, quiet uh, uh, world, uh, and then free healthcare. And then they're still doing business in 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 uh, in USA. So you're showing all the goodies, huh? That's that's a great thing with Canada. <laughs> yes, yes. And yes. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> you're very good with that. And and it's the truth. That's a great thing about it. And amazingly, it's, uh, a lot of people don't consider it because it's just like they don't know enough about Canada. Because when yes. I speak to them, the only two things they have in mind is it's cold, and too much taxes. But the truth is that you're paying taxes and you're getting so many benefits, so people should not be worried about that. You have a job and then, and uh, now people well, are starting I'll, to consider uh, now. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this, Shah. Um, if you pay taxes and you cry about it, then, uh, then uh, well, I don't want to be harsh, but uh, paying taxes is not a bad thing. It's paying how much you pay, right? and whether you're getting value yes. for money in return by the, your government. Exactly. And uh, currently exactly. what people are craving for is good, clean living environment, healthy uh, yeah. households, yeah. healthy communities, and uh, health care, number one. Food security, number exactly. two. Or together with health, mm -hmm. good health care, you have to have food security. And Canada has lots of land for agriculture. So I invite all the people mm -hmm. who are into agro industry to come to Canada. I invite all those people who want to protect their family. Uh, thank God up to now we are still safe, safer than a lot of places. Then consider Canada, you know. It's not for, if it's not for economic prosperity, it's for your, for your family's well-being. Exactly. And, uh, and, and that's why it's, it's, uh, it's the biggest part of it, the, the best part of it is that Canada is very much like the United States in terms of uh, amenities. You get pretty much everything that is in U.S. in Canada, plus in return, you're getting all those extra benefits. So try mm -hmm. it, and uh, and for those people who need help, feel free to reach out, 510 yep. 
And Masood, yeah. tell us a little bit about, I think we have another 10 minutes, right, uh, Ira? 10, we do 12 have, minutes. We so. have, yeah, about 15 yeah, minutes, 14, 15 minutes. Anything specific you want to ask, Ira? Take advantage of it. We have Masood here. Good. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Ira. Hey, hello. Anything that I want to ask you, I will probably connect with you offline. But right now, uh, it's a great conversation. And, you know, when you were talking about taxes, the only thing that came to my mind was really are taxes so high, uh, higher than California? Because California, we literally pay probably for premium living, we pay high taxes. And yeah. so would be the case in Canada. You actually get what you pay for. Actually, uh, yes, uh, you know, I'm happy. Other may, other people may not be happy, but I am. And, and well, then, I'm not saying it because I'm trying to push Canada forward, but uh, because uh, so far I have feel safe. My family feels safe absolutely. and healthy. I can move around and uh, I have access to good health care and, and food. The thing is, if people have problems, if people do have complaints, they always have an option, right? They yeah. have a choice, so it's yeah. their choice to make. Listeners, if you uh, are considering uh, Canada as an option, this yeah. is a great platform right now. We have a uh, lawyer, Masood, on air with us. And if you'd like to get in touch with him, you can get in touch with Attorney Shah Pirali's office and they will be able to connect you with uh, Masood, uh, with lawyer Masood. You can Absolutely. call the office number 510 Five eight eight seven. That's five ten seven four two five eight eight seven. And uh, the website for Attorney Shah Pirali is piralilaw.com. That's p e e r a l l y l a w dot com. Yeah. So we do have twelve minutes. Let's continue this great conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I I I, I don't know what else to say. Um, maybe next time we can take one or two calls just to fill in the blank. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that because we had so much. We have not con uh, uh, basically kind of got in touch for almost more than one month now. And happy mm. Ramadan, yeah. by the way. It's Ramadan. Yeah. Uh, Let's do it over. more so, often. Oh. Yeah, we should. Uh, but the thing is that you're so busy right now. And I've been uh, kind of with Ramadan and everything. So things got disbalanced. But I think we should yeah. do that at least once a month. Uh, if you're yeah, okay with at least that, once a month. and we yeah. will cover topics that are that are very relevant to the situation, and yeah. this is a very good, yeah. um, pretty much a real uh, truth about what's going on in Canada because there are so many myths. Like people will come and tell me, no, this is what happened there, this one happened, but at least you're giving mm -hmm. us a clear picture. And just to let you know, a lot of people go and contact all those consultants, which in Canada are kind of a law practice, not practice yes. law, but at doing immigration. But yes. the difference, uh, okay, I'll give you an example. Right now, I just read an article. One guy, he's one of those quote-unquote consult consultants. He ripped off like so many people and took off. But as a yeah. lawyer, to 25 years, we have a license. We have things to protect. And at the same time, you have a good reputation. People just should not jump because, hey, you know, the consultant, and they will promise you the moon. They have nothing to lose, really, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's but talk I a little bit about that five minutes before you yeah, go. I, I don't blame the consultants entirely. In Canada, consultants are regulated, so they are licensed consultants who are legitimately allowed to practice certain um, uh, immigration uh, in the immigration area. But there are those who are the ghost consultants. Those who are not licensed, who, mm. who ha they will tell you on their website that they are they are hooked up with, they are tied up with, they have a link to a lawyer or Canadian consultant, but you can never find the name or the number of the consultant on their website. So people fall prey to them uh, because they are the con artists, uh, and and they are called the agents, the ghost consultants, the the little operators in the shadow. Not so much in the shadow, actually. A lot of them have websites, have YouTube channels. And uh, so that's, that's something people have to be, you know, buyer beware. You know, if you go buy a car and if there are two wheels missing, one wheel missing, uh, you, <laughs> you will not buy that car, but you will inspect before you buy. But for, unfortunately for immigration, people don't check credentials and references. Lawyers, there's a website, exactly. a government website, our regulating body website that can easily tell you whether I'm a lawyer or not. Same goes for licensed consultants. Uh, but uh, those agents who operate, uh, especially overseas, they are the dangerous ones. And uh, uh, again, I also blame the people who participate in this in the scams. There are people who are desperate, who don't qualify, and they they are told what they want to hear by these agents, by these ghost consultants, by these unethical agents. That look, don't worry, you just give me your money, 
and I will produce all the documents for you. So people are quite happy to participate in the scam, and that's why they're quite happy yes. to pay lots of money. And uh, and and when when they don't get what they bought or what they paid for or what they get caught, they blame the agent, the course consultant, uh, and then they don't blame themselves. That's one. Second is uh, uh, there are people who who charge for things that they're not allowed to charge. You know, so you have to be careful. Mm-hmm. And talking to a lawyer in Canada or anywhere around the world is not that difficult, at least from my perspective. Lots of people call us uh, for for free advice, sometimes for paid advice if it's going to take too much of my time. But um, the information is there, and don't rely only on the internet for your research because what you read on the internet is not is not biblical. It's not the Bible, hmm. right? So so exactly. people go to this. I have clients who will come to me and say, "Oh, I read this on the internet. Oh, how come you?" I say, "I don't know." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they will say, "How come you don't know?" I said, "Because <laughs> exactly. I don't care." What I read on the yeah. internet is not the law. The law is in the law books, right? Yes. And as a lawyer, exactly. you know that, sure, we have to be up to date. And and so exactly. people, just like going to the doctor and saying, I read on the internet that I'm dying, right? <laughs> the doctor will laugh. <laughs> Say, stop, please. Stop yeah. Googling your symptoms. We get we get that a lot on the radio, too. Oh, we read yep. that, and that's... That's how been a kind of unfortunately yeah. keeping people. Sometimes but, but, you get. I tell people you can read just factual stuff, but not the law because they will mess it up and confuse themselves. No, but them in yeah, you can read. You can just read, browse to waste time if you want. If you want advice from Facebook, then be my guest. Lose your money, no problem. You know, Facebook exactly. is not the place for anything except uh, people who don't have much else to do. <laughs> <laughs> you like me right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just yeah. uh, no, but that's, that's, a, that's a dig. Yeah, that's, so, a dig I, that's a dig at Shah actually. Well, he's always on Facebook. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, that's why, that's yeah, why I said that. <laughs> no, but that's that's usually to insult some some leader somewhere in the world because that's my priority. Yeah. I, I can't stand them. So, oh, um, but most of the time, uh, information unless it's reliable then i will pass it uh, yeah, once in a yeah. while but uh, actually it's fun sometimes you know right now with the lockdown and all the stuff that was the only place but going uh, going back now i think we should be almost done i wanted to thank yeah, you all thank for, you so much for, thank you for, Ira, thank, thank you, you for, for Thank you. Thank you, Masood. Thank you very much for being here, well, for taking out time. You know, at the onset, yeah. you had said that you guys are so busy right now that your phones are yeah. ringing off the hook. And you, yeah. you know, you still came out here and uh, spoke no to us. No problem. Uh, so Always a pleasure. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you so much. Thank Adani you. Thank you. with Masood. <laughs> Take care. Take care, Masood. Take so, care. So, okay, Rafi, Rafi Ramadan and Eid Mubarak because we'll probably talk after Eid now. And you too. So we'll, Enjoy. Okay, thank care. you. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. So now, uh, since we have another few minutes, we uh, have five more uh, minutes to go. To yes, you know, five more minutes. Yeah, let's kind of wrap up a little bit uh, here because Masood is is uh, has given us a lot of information here. And, yes, uh, and the truth is that uh, even as an immigration lawyer, I I don't know how Canadian system works. I knew the basics a little bit, but I cannot even advise people on them. So. That's why when when uh, when I have to talk about that, I have to bring someone who's licensed to do that, and that brings an important point, because a lot of people sometimes will call me and say, "Hey, you know what? I have this issue in my country, uh, Pakistan, India, uh, uh, Algeria, and this is the thing. I can't answer, even if I know the answer. I'm not allowed to do that because I'm not licensed in those countries. So mm-hmm. it is important that you hire a lawyer who is licensed in that country now." Unfortunately, many lawyers are not trustworthy also because the system has its own issues, but just try to find out a, the reputation and a recommendation, then you will get your answers. There are some lawyers who, as what we call, um, in California, they have something called foreign legal consultant, and I think Canada has this too, where as a lawyer of another country, if you meet the requirements, you pay a fee to the state bar, you can actually uh, represent people on a specific laws to your country. For example, you're from India, if you're a foreign legal consultant, you can represent people in the U.S. for Indian law, nothing else, all right? Mm-hmm. So in those cases, it's good to hire those people. I just wanted to bring that up. So on my side, pretty much now, we, we didn't cover much of uh, U.S. immigration, and we didn't take any callers. Hopefully next time we will have callers, and we will accept callers uh, when Masood is here. 
And uh, just to, to let people know is that anything we told you today is our opinion. We should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. But I think I have another three minutes. I thought we were done. Okay, sorry. Uh, so I, I yeah, so we have another three minutes. Let me talk a little bit about what's happening now with this new memo that Sharif was talking about mm -hmm. last week. We didn't have a chance to cover it. That memo is a very interesting memo that came out where basically the USCIS have to give deference, which means they have to give priority to a decision which happened um, before. For example, let's say they approve your H-1B, and then you remember under Trump how a lot of people were getting, when they apply for an extension or a transfer, they get just get a denial because they say, oh, you don't meet so-and-so requirements because two, three years ago you didn't meet that. So now with Biden's new memo and executive order, what they're going to do, they're going to allow people, they're not going to allow this. Um, U.S. is going to, uh, when the adjudicator, the officer looking at your case, if he sees the case was approved previously, he will have to give preference to an approval instead of a denial. Remember back in the days when we had this Trump kind of era cloud where we would tell people, okay, your chances of denial is higher than approval. Mm -hmm. Now it's the other way around, which is a good thing. And many cases which they have uh, uh, dug into, into them into the wrong way now, if you had a denial, you might be able to request for reconsideration or reapply. So if you need help on those, give us a call. Five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. You had one question or something? No, uh, uh, Attorney uh, Sharif also when he joins us and he talks about these uh, national interest waivers and AB one categories and all those, they are also pretty uh, interesting. You know, thank you for bringing this information to this platform, Attorney Shah, uh, because a lot of Thanks. us do not know that these options even exist. And you know, when we think that we are out of options, okay, what are we supposed to do when it's actually about existing in this country or surviving? That's when you and your team help us so thank you very much for doing this listeners if you thank would you like you. if you would like to get in touch with attorney shapirali and his team you can call on their office number 510-742-5887 that's 510-742-5887 east coast or west coast the offices are in newark san francisco and Washington, D.C., so you can get in touch with them no matter where you are or if you know someone who needs help about immigration, be it employment-based immigration or be it family-based immigration. And today, like we had, uh, you know, uh, lawyer Masood Jumrati sure. on air with us. So even if it's about Canadian immigration, you can get in touch with Attorney Shah who can in turn get you in touch with lawyer Masood. Attorney Shah, anything else that you'd like to add? We have last 30 seconds. No, I wanted to thank I wanted to thank you for, for helping us. And again, next week we'll be back. And we usually put all those shows uh, on our YouTube channel. Yes. So join our YouTube.com slash Shopright Law. Take care. Bye-bye. And uh, uh, Eid Mubarak, for, oh, uh, probably I'll talk to you guys before Eid. <laughs> yes. But otherwise, uh, I say Eid Mubarak to all of the people, okay? So take care. And hopefully things get better in India. Let's pray for India. Let's pray. Take thank care, you. Bye -bye. Thank you very much, Attorney Shah, for being here. Yes, I'll talk to you again next week before Eid. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in. You stay tuned to Radio Zindagi.